So let's look at some of the reasons that uh, Byrne thinks that Lehman's argument ultimately fails. Let's concentrate on section two, which really has to do with um, the first premise that, uh, well, that in every actual case, one has most reason to do what is morally required. Um, the section two basically, well, let's see what he says. Um, Layman's argument in support of premise one consists in an appeal to our intuitions. If we believe that someone in doing an act was doing his or her duty, should we not assume that the act was fully justified on this basis? We just take it that if an act is someone's moral duty, then that person has overriding reasons to do it. If we deny this, then we must be prepared to admit that in some cases, the answer to the question, why should I be moral, is I should not. One strategy of response to layman is to accept his sub-conclusion four, but to deny one by contending that four does not demonstrate that atheism provides a real threat to the moral life. We remind ourselves that four is, therefore, if there is no God and no life after death, then in some cases one does not have reason, have most reason to do what is morally required. Um, so what is what is uh, Byrne doing here in section two? Um, well, I think what he's doing is saying that uh, four is acceptable. That is, um, th that we would accept the truth of four that one could say there is no God and no life after death. And in some cases, one does not have most reason to do what is morally required and that this wouldn't be calamitous. What it would mean is that our first premise was more or less true, that in almost every case, we do have most reason to do what is morally required, but in some extreme cases, we do not. That is admitting that in some extreme cases, um, what we have most reason to do is not what is morally required. And that, for instance, Ms. Poor, um, yeah, she does not have most reason to do what is morally required, that is not steal. Um, but that this is not fatal to morality, right? That's the idea, that, that accepting four does not, as he says, demonstrate that atheism provides a real threat to the moral life, because we recognize that those cases are rare, that those cases are extreme. Uh, as he says here, it is uh, so far open, well, or up, up here on page uh, 389, the second paragraph, it is so far open to the atheist to accept that there are some extreme cases in which premise one of Lehman's argument is false. Extreme might seem a tangentious word in the context of this discussion. Um, yet Lehman characterizes his own argument as questioning the, quote, the rationality of doing what's morally required if the gains for all affected are relatively minor and the long-term disadvantages of the agent are momentous, unquote. But this very account of the force of his examples strongly suggests that abandoning the intuition that morality always overrides is a reasonable option. But as I think what he's saying there is that um, one thing we could do is to admit that the first premise is that, that we, we always have most reason to do what is morally required is not false, but it's not universal, that there are extreme cases where we... Um, we have most reason to do what is not morally required, but that they're rare, that they're rare, that we recognize that it's almost always true, um, but it is not universally true. It is not always true. Um, Layman's argument depends upon us, I suppose, wanting to preserve a situation in which every case, in every case, doing what is morally required is is the most rational or the most uh, reasonable thing to do. I think what Byrne is saying is that, well, that couldn't possibly be true. There must be some extreme cases in which uh, not doing what is morally required is the most reasonable thing to do, but that this is not any threat to morality in general because these cases are so extreme. 
Um, now we all recognize that doing virtuous acts, doing what is morally required, is, is, is its own reward. You know, that we would always want to do what is morally required, but recognizing that there would be some cases in which um, we, would, we would not do what is morally required for prudential reasons, and again, that this is not a huge threat to morality in general. <laughs>